Have you ever wondered why the Fetch API in JavaScript doesn't reject promises, even when the request you're making may be, in quotes, unsuccessful? Well, if you don't understand what I mean, let me show you an example here. So here I'm using this JSON placeholder. It's like a free API you can use for testing purposes. And here I've copied this. Yes, yeah, so here I do my fetch, then I have my then, and of course this then is for a resolved promise. And then this second then is for the resolved promise return from here. And here I have this catch block, which is for when the promise is rejected. Now, if I should open the console of this, if I refresh this, well, we get this console log JSON, which is this data here. So it is successful. If we go to the network tab, you can see the same API here. We get a status code of 200. Now, this is fine. But let's say I change this part to something that I know is going to return 404. Now, if I go back to this console, if I refresh here, you see, we get this empty object. But we have a console log error is error here, which we are supposed to get here because I mean, our API request failed. So it is supposed to come to this catch block and then log this part here, but it's not logging that part. The fetch API doesn't reject the promise. It still resolves the promise. That's why it still does console log JSON and we have an empty object. And the same thing happens if you are also using async awaits. It's not just the traditional promises. So yeah, I have an async await example in this try block i am doing all of this getting the data using the await keyword and then here i have the catch block for when the api fails if i refresh this this works because i have slash one but let's say i had slash ten thousand also if i refresh this you see again that we do not get this error is whatever which means this catch block is not run now why is this the case well you might think this is a bug in the fetch api but it's actually not and i'll explain now when you say a request is unsuccessful what does an unsuccessful request mean first let's talk about a successful network request a successful network request is a request that was sent from your client to the server the server processed it and then the server sent a response an unsuccessful request would then be a request that maybe it never got to the server or it got to the server but the server did not process it or it got to the server the server processed it but the server did not send a response in that case that request is unsuccessful so your 404 your 403 those kind of requests also falls under a successful request because the request got to the server the server processed the request and then the server saw that the data you are trying to assess does not exist so the server sent a 404 response back to you even though it's a 404 it's still successful because a response came back and that is why even though we have this part here which if we go to this network tab you see that it's returning a 404 status code for the fact that we got a response we got a status code if you go to the response headers we actually got things from the server for the fact that we got these things from the server this is still a successful request and that is why in this case the fetch api doesn't reject the promise the fetch api still resolves the promise and that is why we can handle that promise in the den now what would be a better way to check if a 200 status code was actually returned well here before you do response.json you might want to first check if response.ok so this ok property allows you to validate the status code or validate the response that came from the server if it is a positive response then we can say positive and then here we can return response.json but if the response.ok is false then we can now have console log negative so if i should come back here to the console if i refresh now we get negative because this part returns a 404 our condition here is false but then if i should change this back to one and i refresh now now we get positive and then it comes to this point here where we now get the data and the same logic applies if you want to do a try or a catch but then let me also show you an example of an unsuccessful request now let's say up here we type a server that doesn't exist let's say blah 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 dot typeico.com now if i should refresh this see what we now get we now get error is type error fail to fetch at this this error is is coming from this catch block here so in this case 
the catch block is actually executed, which means the fetch API rejected the promise. And why did it reject the promise here? Well, that is because our request is unsuccessful. Unsuccessful in the sense that it didn't get to a server. So if I should come to this network tab now and I refresh, if you check here, well, you can see that even the response headers are empty. We didn't get any response. You can see we also don't have any status code. Well, that is because there was no server to receive this request, process it and send a response. The same thing for the async awaits. Let me quickly show you that. So if I uncomment this part and let's change this also to blah, blah, blah. If I come to this console and I refresh, you see we get the same thing. Error is, which is coming from here. And then you have the actual error, fail to fetch at whatever. So. Coming back to the question, why does the fetch API not reject promises? Well, that is because your API requests were actually successful. The status code may have been 200 or it may have been 400, but the request was successful because there was a response from the server. And that is why the fetch API still resolves such promises. The fetch API would only reject promises when the request is unsuccessful. And just like I said, an unsuccessful request is a request that actually didn't get received or processed by a server. So if you've been trying to understand this, I hope this helps. You've probably thought this is one of the many problems with JavaScript, but this is actually not a problem. You just need to understand this concept better so that this kind of problems would then make sense to you. I hope this video helps. I also have a full video where I dive into more detail on the Fetch API. You can see it somewhere currently on the screen. And you can check out that video if you're interested in learning more about this API. Also, please give this video a like, share with others and subscribe for more simplified videos like this.